So AMD stands for Age Related Macular Degeneration. So obviously it comes with age and we're talking about um, 60 plus patients. However, you could see it in the 50 year old, but it would be rarer. Macula is the center of your vision. So the retina, the eye is like a ball and in the back, the retina covers the, the whole back of that. And then in the center of that is called the macula. Um, and it can be affected by many different diseases, but this one age related macula degeneration and degeneration obviously is just degeneration can be of two forms, wet and dry. And your doctor will tell you which form that you have. And um, there are treatments for both of these actually, although in the, in the pipeline. So macular degeneration is treated and has been treated for at least 18 years now by um, a medication called anti-vascular endothelial growth factor. The problem is there's many, many different forms of this treatment. And the first treatments were invented back in the 90, late 1990s when somebody who was having treatment for bowel cancer noticed that their vision got better and they had macular degeneration. And from that has developed a huge range of different treatments for wet macular degeneration. And your doctor will explain to you which one that you are going to get. Um, and each one has a different advantage and a different price level. Um, there are treatments for, that's for wet. There are treatments for dry macular degeneration in the pipeline. And we'll talk about these at a later time. Let's talk about the different available treatments for wet macular degeneration to start off with. So the most basic one, and they've got really, really complicated names, by the way, I'll call it under the simple name, Avastin. The more complex name is Bevacizumab. And when you see Mab on the end of a word, it usually means it's um, monoclonal antibodies. So that's what that means when it says Mab. So um, uh, Bevacizumab is the, the basic treatment, which a lot of European countries give. The problem is with it is you have to give it kind of more frequently so about every month, but it's okay. It's a really good treatment as long as you can get the treatment um, monthly and it's it, and it's and it's cheaper. So that would be sort of like in the UK, seventy pounds uh, a vial or treatment for the actual drug. The second one, which was developed after that, was called Lucentis. This is a licensed drug. Avastin is an unlicensed drug, but we still use it. So Lucentis um, replaced uh, Vastin uh, uh, for the very early part of the, 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 the 2000s, 2004, 2006, and then became a better drug called Aflibicept. Again, a very strange name, but the other name for it is Ilea, which is easy to remember. This is slightly more uh, advantageous than the other treatments because it lasts longer. It lasts about anything from two to three months, depending on the, uh, the, the presentation of the patient. But recently, there has been a new, two new drugs. One was called Bayerview. Uh, I don't tend to use that drug anymore because it caused some inflammatory changes in patients. So I didn't really think um, it was worth taking the risk of using that drug. So I don't use that. Um, and the, the, the one that's the most exciting is one called Verbismo. Again, a funny name. Um, I can't even remember the other name for it now. It's, oh, Ferisimab. So Ferisimab, again, it's got the ab on it. And this is even more advantageous because it's slightly better than the other drugs. Because it, it targets two pathways. So the, the problem with your, your retina when you've got macular degeneration is you've got these blood vessels growing. And the drug targets those blood vessels and makes them shrink. Now, ILEA has two components to it. That's the aflibicept one. It's got anti-vascular endothelial growth factor, big long word. And then you've got something else called, I know it's really weird, but it's called placental growth factor. Those two combined together work better than the, than the pre predecessing drugs. The third drug that's now come onto the, the, sorry, the fifth drug that's come onto the market is called the Bismo. And that one has anti-vascular endothelial growth factor, but it also has something called an ANG2 inhibitor. So it's even more effective and it dries the retina even higher. And I'm very excited about this drug because I've only just started using it about two months ago and it seems to work really well. The problem is, is it's slightly more expensive than the other drugs, but the advantage is, is that it lasts longer. So it can last up to four months. So that would mean you'd only need to have three injections a year. So it could be a cost-effective way of managing this particular disease, or particularly if you hadn't responded 
to a Febicept. For dry macular degeneration, I'm also extremely excited because I think in the pipeline, possibly crossing our fingers in the next 18 months to two years, we're going to have treatment for dry macular degeneration. And uh, this is a, a drugs called complement inhibitors. Unfortunately, at the moment, they are working on injectables, which is not the ideal for me. It would be much better if it was oral. But I've got a feeling we will get there. And also, if you've got dry macular degeneration, some doctors said there's no treatment for dry macular degeneration. That's not true, actually. There are treatments for it. One is that you can take ARIDS formula vitamins, which are specific vitamins formulated to stop you developing wet. And secondly, you can have um, visual aids and magnifiers. It's very important when doctors say, oh, it can't be treated, not to become despondent, because in my opinion, that's not true. Patients can always be treated, even if it's just a psychological treatment, helping them to come to terms with the fact that their vision isn't so good. And remember, with macular generation, you don't go completely blind. You're not going to go to blackness that you can't see. You'll always be able to brush your hair. You'll be able to, you know, get dressed, make your, make your dinner. It's really important that you understand that and don't listen to doctors say it's not treatable because it can make you very, very depressed and it's just not true. Well, the new treatments are, are brilliant because they last longer. Um, so the first, first generation, which was basically bevacizumab and Lucentis, you had to give it monthly. And I remember when I first started using them, I did that religiously. So for because when we first started using them, and I started using them in 2003, um, we didn't know how long we had to keep on using them. And so we got complacent. So we used it every month for a year. And then we thought, well, maybe we could maybe make it go two months and you'd see them and they were fine. And then they'd have a bleed. And so I soon realized that you couldn't really stop them. You had to keep on treating these patients. But the new ones, particularly um, Verbismo, is looking really exciting because you probably only have to use it three or four times a year if you're in the lucky cohort that responds to that particular drug. Um, there is a new another uh, system that is available called the port delivery system, which is when you uh, surgically insert a, a sort of a port into the eye. It sounds awful, but it, it's fine. And that will deliver the drug over a six month period. And that's something exciting. It's not something that I do. Uh, and there's not many people in this country that do it. As far as I know, I don't think there's anybody, but there are countries like Israel where it was developed. So, um, in the future, we are obviously hoping to develop an oral treatment for macular degeneration, or at least something that lasts longer than three months, could last a year or two years. And we're working on those pipelines.